like an ache right here. What is it? Loss. It's like a little ulcer right here that never goes away. And you somehow figure out ways to take your mind off it enough to not feel it as much. But yeah, sometimes you lose sight of what's going on around you because you just... You just want to be able to breathe the way you did before. Well, Dan joins me now. It's so good to see you. <laughs> Congratulations on Good Grief. Thank I mean, you it's, so much. You know, it's, I know it's such a passion project. You know, you're in it. Mm -hmm. You wrote it. You directed it. Mm -hmm. um, you probably made everybody the food. <laughs> I don't know. You did so, so much. Fortunately, <laughs> some very capable people did that. I Nobody wants me in a kitchen. <laughs> but it's very, you know, when I was watching it, anybody who's experienced any kind of grief mm. will instantly get it. Oh, that's kind. You know, they really will, especially your character who's going through a hellish time. Not great, no. And I just, in my mind, I'm thinking of all the people who have known me from my TV show watching this and being like, <laughs> what is happening here? Um... <laughs> But yeah, you know, I think for me it was a story that I, I felt really compelled to tell. And mm. I think in the in the industry that we're in, you, you can kind of be sort of pigeonholed into these different boxes. And I think because I had such success in in, in comedy, there was this expectation that, that that is what I would do next. Sure, but I'm and glad you didn't. I'm so glad you think that. Because it just because there, there are flashes of humour. Yeah. Of course they're not. Of course, I'm a yeah. bit dark. Mm -hmm. Because when you're in a dark place, sometimes that's the only way to deal with it. I think humor comes to us in the strangest, darkest, most uncomfortable times in our life. And I think it's almost a coping mechanism at the end of the day. Totally. It's totally. It's, it's what we have to get us get us through it all. So it was important to weave in a little bit of, yeah. of humor through the drama. And at the very start of it, I just thought that relationship that you have with Luke Evans, who I adore, the yeah, future husband. Yeah, it was a tough, it was a tough casting. It must um, have been really hard for you yeah, to go through all that. Just and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. a tough face to spend time with. But what a beautiful relationship they have. He's and, so lovely. And I wanted to be at that party and all mm. of the friendships. And, and it was very real as well, because you know we've all got friends that annoy us. <laughs> you know, they yeah. do, right? They, well, that's sort of what the movie is kind of about. Yeah. My friends mean the world to me for a variety of reasons. But I rarely get to see friendship being the center of, of the storytelling when it comes sure. to, to movies. That's and to show adult friendships in this way that are flawed, but really celebratory and meaningful. Sometimes I think the closest friends we have and the oldest friends that we have are the ones we excuse the most in terms of bad behavior and bad habits and things. And if, if someone were to kind of walk in off the street and assess some of our closest friendships, they might just say, <laughs> you might all want to have a chat <laughs> with each other. Exactly. Um, but that's part of the love. I think when you love someone so much, you're willing to overlook some of the things that they might need to address in their own life. But also, grief is not something that's really explored all that much. It's used sometimes mm. as a device in movies, mm -hmm. but as a sort of at the heart of it. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the key messages was that this person... My, my character in the film has feels very isolated by grief. And I think what the film tries to reassure him with is that in a way grief is all around us and that sometimes as isolating as it can feel and as, as solitary as it can feel when we're going through it, there is great comfort in knowing that everyone is grieving something in some capacity. Yeah. No, it's true. Worse. Do you know what I loved as well at the end? There's artwork of all mm. the characters. Yeah. Please don't tell me you painted that as well, because for goodness sake. Can you imagine? <laughs> no. So... Well, you did everything else. The beautiful thing about this... The beautiful thing about making something is that you can reach out to people that you love and hope that they want to collaborate with you. Right. And uh, Chris Knight is an artist who is a, an extraordinary artist and... When I was putting the movie together, I knew how important, because my character is a painter, and I knew how important it was that these paintings be really good yeah. and really specific and really emotional. And so I called him on the phone randomly out of the blue. We'd never met. And I asked him if he would be a part of it, and he said yes. And um, it's amazing how meaningful his work is in the movie. And um, Especially the, the one of Luke Evans, the, uh, the, yeah. the character that Luke well, is playing. Yes. But yeah. it's, that is gorgeous. Yeah. I hope he got to keep it. 
I think Netflix might own those. <laughs> we might have to break, we might have to break into the Netflix vaults and steal back our paintings. I know. We were I don't talking, know how this works. I know. We were talking about lovely Luke, and um, my abiding memory of this man, and I'm sure you'll be exactly the same. Uh-huh. He's a great singer, and he sings in the film at the what very very start. Not do? It's so annoying. And I first met him watching Adele. We went to an Adele concert, and he happened to be there. But do you know what I enjoyed more than anything? Watching Luke singing Adele. That was the highlight for was me. Was Luke singing Adele in the concert? In the audience. In the seat beside you. <laughs> in the audience, we were standing. See, that's where I would have gone, honey, we're good. But it was, it was lovely. <laughs> just, he's just a dream. Oh, no, he's fantastic. And can I just say thank you to you and your cast and your family for getting us through the COVID with Shit's Creek. You, you don't mind talking I about Shit's Creek. I had no history. idea how many people in this country watched oh, that show. I think everybody watched it twice. It was nuts. <laughs> And I don't know what it is, but I was walking down the street, just people are talking about it all the time. I think you 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 never really feel how far-reaching something is mm. until you travel in a place. It was, and, it was a joy because so you, makes me feel so laughed great. and laughed and laughed. And I think I think over here as well, we just got it right away. We got that yeah. sense, you know, your sense of humor and your family's well, sense of humor. Well, it's the Canadian thing. So it I feel has like connections. There's ties. Yes, yeah. definitely. It's that and dry, self-deprecating uh-huh, humor. Uh-huh, which mm-hmm. is so, so good. And I want to be Moira when I grow up. I do. Listen. And I'm going to get my license to officiate a gay wedding. <laughs> because I have a lot of those costumes in my house. Have you? So if you ever want to try. Oh, my God. Try it all on. I mean, that, would, to me, would be, like, it's the best thing ever. Away. And it's just lovely to see you. It really is. It's lovely to see you. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Oh, the film goodness. is beautiful. Good Grief is out on Netflix on the 5th of January.